Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim and today I'm continuing my playthrough of Knights over Stalingrad. We are getting ready to start the uh, second mission which will be the 25th of November. Our campaign started on the 24th. Uh, but before we get into that uh, just a few preliminaries I wanted to go over. Uh, I mentioned uh, in one of the previous episodes that, of course, this is this game is still in development, so going to be some uh, tweaks and changes coming along the way, and we've already had some since I recorded the last mission. Uh, one thing that uh, Dan felt it was a little bit too easy to uh, earn campaign points uh, by doing really well on a mission. Uh, so he's increased the cost, the mission point cost, for uh, campaign morale points, at least for on the positive side. Uh, so now in order to, it's still one to get one campaign morale point, but now 10 mission points for two campaign morale points and 20 uh, mission points for three campaign morale points. Uh, so if you recall on the last mission, we did spend 10 uh, mission points to purchase three campaign morale points. Uh, but we should have actually, based on the new rules, uh, spent 20. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take away 10 of my banked uh, mission points uh, to account for that. So we are actually we're only able to bank eight mission points. Uh, we don't actually have, well, we have enough for one of the options, uh, for spending those banked mission points, which would be to acquire the use of an FW-189, uh, recon aircraft for one of our missions. Um, in fact, we could go ahead and purchase it, and then you get to choose when you actually want to use it. Uh, so maybe I'll go ahead and do that, because that only takes six mission points for that. Everything else is 10, or uh, there is an option for 8, but only for the Soviet player. And then there's an option for spending 15, but again, that's only if you're a Soviet player. Uh, everything else for the Germans costs 10. So yeah, I think we'll go ahead and spend those 6 mission points then. So we'll, or those, yeah, the banked mission points. We're going to put a... Uh, FW189 in with our, uh, what was that? Here we go. In with our, in our ready box. And then we'll choose when we actually want to use this. And when we do, it basically helps out with uh, ground attack missions. Uh, gives you a positive die roll modifier on those. Um, uh, when you uh, perform on a ground attack, also helps out with the uh, initial detection chart roll as well. But I think the main the main thing is for ground attacks. So we'll hold off on that until we uh, get a mission where I think that will be pretty useful. I mean, we are going to do a ground attack mission this turn or this. Uh, this mission because uh, I'm going to go ahead and do these uh, historic Axis ground attack missions for the next two days uh, but I think there might be some better ones or well we'll see we might decide to use it this turn we'll wait and see all right um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, regarding the I also mentioned previously that the uh, counter art was still uh, playtest version. We've got kind of a sneak peek of some of the new icons here for the uh, named aces, uh, which I don't think I mentioned these uh, before either. But each each uh, nationality, I guess, has uh, named aces that can potentially come into play through uh, some mission cards. Uh, they might get involved, or there's also some in-flight event cards that can cause uh, named aces to become involved. 
but uh, yeah, here's just uh, an example of some of the new uh, artwork that's going to be coming down the pike. Uh, you can actually, if you get on Board Game Geek in the images section, uh, Ian has uploaded uh, uh, a proof of the counter sheets. So you can kind of see on there too what the different aircraft will look like. Uh, but very clean looking. Looks nice. Uh, let's see one of the Soviet ones, some of the Soviet ones as well. I already had these kind of out and about. <laughs> There's one that hasn't been replaced. This actually isn't a counter that's going to be in the game, it doesn't look like, but uh, it's still in here for a placeholder for now. Uh, but yeah, here's some of the Soviet aircraft you can see. Uh, but yeah, these named aces, uh, get this all cleaned up here. <clears throat> um, they each have a, there's uh, cards for the named aces, and so when you're when you're told to gain a named ace, uh, you'll basically draw one of these cards, see who you get. Um, there's a little bit of well, the type of aircraft that they fly, a little bit of historical information about them, and then they each have some of these uh, additional skills uh, that come into play. Uh, just as an example. Uh, this fella has ACM Expert, which is uh, <clears throat> plus one on combat attack die rolls. And then he also has Tactician, which is plus one to pilot experience die rolls for initiative chart placement. So, like I said, there's several of those skills, and uh, each each of the aces will have... At least a couple. I think there's at least one that has three. Yeah, and then there's Romanian aces, Soviet aces, and then there's one Italian ace, which is can be brought into play through a an optional rule. All right, so those were kind of a couple of the things I wanted to cover before we started here. <clears throat> So with that, we'll go ahead and jump into it. So the first thing we'll need to do is to roll for the weather. We rolled a four, which is going to be light clouds. Uh, so that's going to be, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but it's minus one die roll modifier on flak attacks. <clears throat> All right. Then uh, next will be to... Uh, determine the mission. I'm not missing anything here. <clears throat> this is the pre mission phase again that we're going through. So we did the weather mission setup. So we draw a mission card. And like I said, since we're on a turn with this uh, axe symbol for a, an historic uh, axis ground attack mission. We have the option to either do it, <laughs> excuse me, which is in this deck, or to just draw a random uh, fighter mission. So we're going to go ahead and pull this one out. So it's going to be the, uh, where is it? Here it is, the 25 November Evacuate Oblovskaya. Probably butchering that name, but. All right, so that's going to be our mission. So let's take a look at that. Hmm. Uh, we only get to take two fighters this time. We can take a third by spending, uh, basically starting three mission points in the hole. Uh, but we start over Obloskaya, and then we land at Morosovsky. So you can see Obloskaya is just right here too far away and we're evacuating four hs 123s four ju 87s and four hs 129s who are coming under fire there 
Uh, so we have to roll an experience die for each pilot. And that's for each of these. Oops. So I can't do that. That's for each of the pilots that were evacuating. We're already in the in the air over Oblovskaya, so it's not for us. Uh, roll of five or greater is required to take off. Uh, if we roll a one, then the aircraft is destroyed by enemy fire and the pilot is killed. Any others will remain until the November 26th mission, which, as you might guess, will be to try to evacuate the rest. Uh, <clears throat> any that successfully take off will engage a Soviet ground armor target placed at initiative hex one. Uh, and if it's destroyed, we'll replace it with another. And then once that combat is complete, uh, we'll fly to, to Tazinskaya. Okay, so we got to get them so it's not quite as short as I thought. <laughs> so we're going to start here. We need to fly them to Tazinskaya. And then our squadron planes will return back to Morosovsky to land. All right, uh, at least one ground target must be destroyed and one ground attack aircraft must land at Tazinskaya or the mission will be considered a failure and will suffer minus one campaign morale point. So we want to make sure we destroy at least one ground target and at least one of the ground attacks, which would be the HS-123s, I believe, uh, have to make it back. Actually... I think the 129s are as well. I'm wondering if that's supposed to be ground attack or dive bombers, because the JU-87s are dive bombers, I think. Let's just take a look at some of these. So we got these guys, they're ground attack. JU-87s are dive bombers. And the 129s are ground attack. The strict reading of that is at least one of these have to make it back. I mean, I guess it means any of these three types. All right. So why don't we go ahead and pull what we need for that. Four 123s. All ready. There's four of those. Four, four of each, right? Yep. We need four more of these. Or three more, sorry. And then three more of these. All right. I'm just going to kind of put them around Oblovskaya for now. Until we see who manages to take off. Uh, we need to choose our fighters that we want to send. Uh, let's see, let's remind ourselves here what all we have for cards. So we have a improved attack here with the positional advantage. Thatch weave, I did find out this is in fact someone's name and not the word thatch misspelled. Um, so that's a counter attack. We've got our Hartman Escape, which is to an avoid an attack. We also have our Fate card that we forgot to draw at the beginning of the campaign, but we drew it after the last mission. Uh, okay, right, that's where if we come back and have negative mission points, then we have the option to uh, spend up the five to repair or replace aircraft and or pilots and we have our friendly partisans which is to uh, successfully bail out uh, without having to roll all right so let's see um, 
you know what, I think I will go ahead and use our F1, FW189 for this mission so we can see how that works. Uh, I'm going to take my two ace gun, mm, gun boats, I believe, excuse me. And that's interesting though. I need to see how this, this mission's a little bit different. I'm not sure how we would handle this 189 in this case. Because rules say uh, uh, if it's selected to be used on a mission, it does not accompany the flight, but is put into play by rolling on chart A8 prior to moving into the target sector. But in this case, we're actually starting over the target sector. Uh, I'm not sure. Basically, the A8 chart is uh, rolling to see if they encounter a any fighters or not. On a 1, 3, or a 6, they will. And then they have to survive two rounds of combat against those fighters. So I guess in this case, we could just say we do that first, and then our flight basically shows up over the... Over the uh, sector yeah because then uh, assuming it survives those two rounds of combat um, then we continue move the flight into the target sector joining the FW-189 and it provides an additional plus one modifier on the detection advantage chart see we're not going to have a detection advantage role in this case We'd kind of be losing that benefit but we would get the plus one die roll for the attack die rolls on the uh, armored ground target that we'll be going after hmm i don't know i think i'm going to reconsider since uh <clears throat> We're not going to get that plus one modifier. The other thing is, is we could go through and not draw any, you know, other than these two ground attack missions, we could end up not drawing any more, and then we would have wasted that. So I think we'll go ahead and do it, even though we're losing that one benefit from it. So, and I don't think... Don't want to spend the three mission points to take an extra fighter along. Kind of nice to maybe have one of these guys to. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. We're going to start off with negative three. Uh, <clears throat> mission points. All right, uh, so we'll take this guy. All right, so then um, see if there's any other setup we need to do or if we're ready to get started. So I'm going to go ahead and like I did, well, I did it after recording the first mission i ended up splitting it up into three parts i'm going to try to keep each of these uh to about an hour or so so i'm going to set a little timer here for myself so i know when we're getting to an hour i can find a spot to uh try to wrap it up Let's see timer I think we've already been going here about 10 minutes or so, so we'll set it for 
50 minutes. See where we're at. <clears throat> okay, so we were checking our setup. If there's anything else we need to do for the pre mission phase. And well, we do have the option um, if we don't have enough fighters to, uh, to run to fill the uh, mission requirements. And we have the option to request assistance from an allied formation. Uh, you have to spend one campaign morale point to do so, but basically you get to roll a die and <clears throat> depending on what you roll, you'll either get, as a German player, you're going to be getting Romanian, uh, either 109s or IAR 80s to assist you. You can have up to three uh, to come and help fill out your a flight uh, but we don't need to do that at this time we're all good to go so yeah that's uh what we need to do for that so we're going to go ahead then and start with our we are going to choose to use our fw 189 so we need to roll on chart a8 to see if they encounter any fighters we don't want to see a one three or a six four perfect so no fighters <clears throat> so he is with us now and we are over the oblivskaya airfield so now we need to roll for our rapid attack and dive bombers that we are evacuating. And remember, they need a. Yeah, let's keep this here. We'll just move them onto here as they take off. We need to get a five or higher for them to successfully take off. And a one means they're destroyed and the pilot is killed. <clears throat> so, D10. He takes off. Uh, D8. He takes off. D12. He does not take off. Just set him there for now. D10. Takes off. Uh, a D8. the top one it's a d8 <laughs> he takes off a d12 does not wow both of our aces failed to take off uh d10 Ooh, crash and burn we lose a let me zoom on this a little bit there we go we lose a dive bomber Pilot is killed. That's going to be minus. Ooh, I think dive bombers are three points for destroyed, and then another two points for the pilot. So we've already lost five points there. Uh, next one is a D10. He takes off. We got our 129s. A D10 failed to take off. Another D10, he takes off. Another D10, fails to take off. And a D8, fails to take off. All right. So we'll have to try to get these guys out in the next mission. Just going to leave them here on the map. <clears throat> All right, so this is what we've got. And then mission card says. Uh, da, 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 da. Engage a Soviet ground armor target in initiative hex one. 
Unfortunately, there's no other aircraft we have to worry about. Uh, armor target. But the armor target does have an AA2 value. Then remember also, because of the light clouds, there's a minus one die roll modifier on flak attacks. That will work in our favor. All right. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, since there's no enemy aircraft, I don't think there's really any point of rolling on the initiative chart here. So we'll just go ahead and start. So our fighters, now they can <clears throat> strafe the ground target, but the most they're going to do is one damage to it and... They're, of course, subject to the uh, flak, although with the minus one DRM, they would only get hit on an eight. But so I don't think it's worth risking them for that. <clears throat> so we're just going to have all of them pass. Uh, now, because of the presence of our uh, recon aircraft, we get a plus one die roll modifier uh, for all of these ground attacks. So I guess we'll just start here with this guy. I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, I could roll for their initiative to see what order we should do them in, but it really makes no difference, so. Uh, we're just going to do it this way. I'll just grab them as they are. All right, so two flak attacks. That's going to be a D8 for each. And for ground attack and dive bombers, they get hit on a six or higher. But remember, we got our minus one die roll modifier, so it'll actually only be a seven or higher. So miss and miss and then we roll a d10 with a plus one and nice we get two hits uh, each each hit from a ground attack or dive bomber does uh two damage that's gonna be four damage on that We'll have this guy go next. Uh, we'll roll two flak. Ooh, that's going to be a hit. And a miss. so that's actually a seven, which is a level B. Ooh, they got three damage on us. Now, one thing to point out here on these uh, HS-123s, you notice that minus two over the uh, <clears throat> aircraft performance rating there. Uh, that gives minus two DRM on attack die rolls. So when they're being attacked, uh, does not apply to flak, uh, I don't believe. I, I, asked that. I used these in the last... Uh, <clears throat> mission that I play or campaign that I played and I'm pretty sure I asked Dan about that and he said no it does not apply to flat it's under the yeah here they are when they're attacked my deer under minus two is added to the two hit die roll yeah so it's only when being attacked by other aircraft all right, uh, so he's got to do three damage there. And then a damage check. Ooh, critical hit. He is flipped. Takes another damage chip for two more damage. Puts him up to five, another damage check. 
and he's destroyed. Wow. Just like that. Flip it over. And then let's see if the pilot managed to bail out. D8. He did. And then... Uh, now we could use our uh, <clears throat> friendly partisans here. Although this isn't one of our squadron aircraft, so I think this is better saved for one of them. So we'll hope he can get away here. And he did. Uh, all right. So that's going to be another minus three points, though, I think. Not good. All right. <clears throat> We're going to have to destroy a bunch of ground targets here to make up for that. Uh, let's take this guy in next. Uh, so he takes two flak attacks, miss and miss, and then a D10 with a plus one. Five, not quite good enough. <clears throat> Send this guy in next, two flak attacks, miss, miss. And a D8 plus one. Missed. Uh, let's see. D10. Or, sorry, flak first. So two flak attacks. Miss. Uh, seven becomes six, which is a level C hit. He takes one damage. And damage check, safe. Uh, wow, I wish I would have put the leg and roll that again for my attack. So here's his attack. No, missed. Oops. Oh boy, one last chance here in the first round. Uh, D8 for flak times two. Seven is a six, which is a hit. And that's a miss. Be another level C hit, one damage, and uh, damage check. Another critical man, killing us. Uh, so he takes another level C, which does another damage. D two now. And another damage check. Passed. <coughs> All right. So he does get to make his attack now. And he misses. Well, that was pretty uh, poor performance there in round one. See if we can do better in round two. I'm just going to leave the fighters down there because they're just going to pass again. All right, here we go. Two flak attacks. That's a level B hit. Three damage. And damage check oh, fails. Wow. It's not going well at all. <clears throat> um, and his attack. There we go. Two more damage. So that's going to destroy this one. Oops. Two. I want to delete this um, clone option, so we'll just grab another one. All right, well, that makes up a little bit there. Five points for that uh, ground target, I believe. Or hold on, uh, I think he was talking about. 
reducing those to four. He's actually made that change yet though. Yes. So uh, destroyed ground targets are now only four mission points. So I guess technically if we re went back to refit that as well, <laughs> we probably wouldn't have had any of those. Uh, a lot fewer banked mission points at least, but too late for that now, I guess. We already spent them. Um, but we'll do that going forward. Only four uh, mission points for destroyed ground targets. All right. Uh, let's send our next one in. He's going to take two plaques. That's a miss. That's a miss. His attack with a plus one. There we go. Four damage on him. <clears throat> and next. Two flak attacks. Miss and that's a hit, but it's only a level C. One damage. Please not roll another critical. Thank you. All right. And then his attack with a plus one. Ooh. Plus one makes it an eight. So that's, well, it didn't matter. One or two damage would have destroyed it. Or one or two hits, I mean. All right. So we've gotten two now. Pull another one. <clears throat> Two flak attacks. Ooh, a hit and a miss. That's a level B hit. For two. Oh, so we got a marker. Two more puts him up to three. Damage check. Are you serious? All right, another B, two more damage. It's an at five. And he rolls a nine, good. All right, and now the attack. Seven plus one is eight. Unfortunately, that's no longer two hits because he's now six slash 10, uh, but it does do two damage. <clears throat> All right, and last one for round two. Two flak rolls oh, hit. Oh, two level B hits. Yikes. All right, so the first one, and I believe you resolve these separately. Um, Good question, actually. Do you do a damage check between each one? Or is it like... No, probably not. Because like when you're attacking with your aircraft, you just do... <clears throat> if you do two hits, you, draw, you apply all the damage and then do the damage check. So I'm going to assume that's the same. Uh, so let's see. Did I just draw this one? Yes, I did. Okay. I guess I should have done a redo. That's all right. I still pulled a three. So that's going to be a total of six. Yikes. He's already got two. So now he's got eight. Damage check. Destroyed. All right, uh, let's roll for the pilot. Uh, bailout roll, safe, and um, 
capture roll. Evasion roll, that's the word I was looking for. Wait, couldn't remember what it was called. <clears throat> They're minus three. And that ends round two. Round three, we just have four left. Yikes, and two of them are damaged. All right. Uh, start with this guy. Two flak rolls, miss, level one hit, or level C hit, I mean. One damage, got three, and that's going to put him at four. Damage check, oh. and hit roll, missed, and with the plus one. All right. Let's go this one next. He's managed to evade getting damage so far. Let's see if we didn't curse him. Miss and miss. Uh, his attack roll, five plus one is six. So he does get one hit. Gonna do two more damage. All right, we got to get two more on this guy to take him out. If it ends like this, he will still be considered damaged. So we'll get, uh, I think it's two points for a damaged ground target because we've done more than 50% of their total strength. All right, two flat rolls, miss and miss. Attack with a D8. Also missed. Last chance here. Um, two flak rolls. Ooh, level B hit. Miss. Could be fatal. Got five, that's three more. Roll a nine or a ten. Nope. He's gone. All right. Uh, pilot bailout check. Bails out and avoids capture. <clears throat> And then this is considered damaged. We'll just chuck it in there. Um, all right, let's go ahead and figure out our points. Uh, we've lost, let me just confirm that. It's pretty sure it's three for each uh, dive bomber or ground attack. Yep. So that's 12 right there. We only had the one pilot that uh, was killed. He was a uh, veteran, so that's another two. So that's minus 14. Uh, we won't do the damaged aircraft yet because don't know what else is going to happen to them. So we're minus 14, but then we got uh, four, eight, uh, plus another two makes 10 to the good. Uh, so we ended up losing four mission points there. Hopefully we can uh, make it up <clears throat> with uh, some sort of encounter on the way to Tazinskaya. All right, so let's clean this up. These can all go away. These are not squadron aircraft, so they can be returned to their decks. These all come up here. Oh, 
So then the, the 189, here's the other uh, tricky bit. So after they're used, <clears throat> yeah, here it is. Um, <clears throat> once combat is complete, the FW-189 automatically returns to its unit. And the player's control of the aircraft has ended. The player also has the option to leave the aircraft on station for an extra round of combat against any remaining enemy fighters. Well, there are none, so sure, we'll do that. Uh, if the recon aircraft survives, the player receives an additional plus two mission points for battle damage assessment verification. So he stuck around for an extra round of combat, but there was no one to go against him. So he just automatically gets the plus two mission points. So that'll be two fewer that we lose, which is at minus five. Uh, and then he goes back. <clears throat> so, hopefully that was a good use of our banked mission points. All right. So now we are not uh, solely fighters, so we cannot move diagonally. Uh, we need to make it to Tazanskaya. We can. So the mission, the mission requires that at least one <clears throat> ground attack makes it back to Tazanskaya, which what do we have left for ground attack? Uh, those are both. That's a ground attack. That's us. So we've got one dive bomber and two ground attack left. <clears throat> what we could do to try to avoid losing this guy is we could uh, fly over Morosovsky and have him land there and then continue on with the rest to has in Skya. So let's at least take that route so that we have that option. We're going to start off moving down here. Stick these guys back in here then for next mission. Um, so we need to roll for a uh, in, uh, for an in-flight event. D10. A 10 is going to be it's always a Look it up. That's always an in-flight event card. Let's see what we got. Lost formation. Any wingmen lose formation and fly as an individual. We don't have any, so no effect. Then we'll go ahead and move into here. Roll for an event. Two is no event. Uh, so now it's decision time. Do we want to land... <clears throat> the uh, this damaged aircraft here and uh, to not risk having him get shot down on the way to Tazanskaya. I mean, the other option is we could have just lost the mission point and automatically sent them to the nearest airfield after the combat, but this way don't have to lose that mission point but do they have to roll for landing let's see <clears throat> undamaged axis fighters that land at a non-home airfield turn the base as close to the place here damaged axis fighters player does not Receive the return to base penalty for landing at a non-home airfield, but squadron and non-squadron aircraft must roll for a safe landing. So it does still have to roll for safe landing. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. 
So we need a two or more and there are no modifiers for light clouds. So it just needs to roll a two or more on a D10. He does. All right. So he lands safely. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and count his uh, minus one mission point for being just, uh, damaged now. And we'll go ahead and send him back to the deck. All right. So we need to make sure this guy gets back. And like I said, I, I'm pretty sure the intention is for at least one of any of these to make it back, not specifically the, the ground attacks, but I'd like to get clarification on that. All right, uh, so let's go this way and roll for an event. Four is no event. Let's see what. <clears throat> We're in row six now, so I think we need to roll. At least a seven or higher to get a light event. Kind of hope when we get something, so we can try to make some mission points back. But some stragglers would be nice. All right, so we'll move to here. Um, roll for an event, no event, and then we don't roll for an event here. I think. Well, maybe we do because that's we're not landing here. I think it's only when you're moving into your home airfield sector that you don't have to roll for an event. Yeah, so let's roll for an event here. Seven? No. Oh, yes. Seven is a flight event. Okay. So now we roll on chart B2. And a seven. It's not going to be stragglers. Rows four to eight, a seven is enemy fighters. Oh boy. <laughs> Should have kept my mouth shut. Um, let's see. Well, we need to roll on chart C4. Roll a D6. And two is going to be the uh, 13th IAP and we get one D3 plus three of them so five so five fighters from the 13th oh boy that's Got a wingman. It's the one though. All right, let's put them over here for now. And we'll pull two more for that wingman counter. Got a <clears throat> an experienced and an experienced. So doesn't matter which one's the lead. All right, so uh, we'll need to do our, um, what's it called again? Detection advantage check. So they are all fighters, we are not. So that's gonna be a minus one to our roll. Uh, and we both have aces, so those cancel out. <clears throat> so, minus one to the roll. I have to roll a three. Comes at two. Enemy surprises you and gets plus one initiative for the first round. All right. Well, let's do theirs first. We don't forget that. So a D12 plus seven, that's good. 
the d10 plus 7. That's not good. Another d10 plus 7. Fine. Uh, d8 plus 7. 13. And a d8 plus 7 is 12. All right, let's see where we end up. D12 plus 7, 13. We'll go before him. Um, D12 plus 7, ooh, nice, 18. Uh, D10 plus 8 is 14. And then a D10 plus 3 is 12. And a D10, or a D8 plus 3, sorry. 7, yikes. He is in trouble. All right. Uh, just looking. My timer is down to 14 minutes. Yes, and we've been going about 45 minutes or so. <clears throat> this combat could take a while to resolve, so I think maybe I'll break here for part one, and we will pick this up in part two. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching. Hope you're enjoying the playthrough here. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in part two. Bye for now.